We're back. It's that time again, Midweek Music Maelstrom, where we show you all the new stuff that you're missing in the world of music. And now you won't be missing it anymore. Today, Misfit Toys. That's who we've got. So, since you've been kind enough to stick with me on this journey, let's get to it. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Richie V. Sariv. I am the singer and songwriter and founder of Misfit Toys. <clears throat> So how would you describe your style? Like what genre would you say Misfit Toys belongs to? I would say I would that say Misfit Toys is a experimental uh, agrotech. Oh, OK. So where can we find your music? Music, uh, we're streamed on all of the major streaming sites. Uh, Deezer, iTunes, uh, Spotify, Apple Play. Google Play, we're on Amazon, we're on YouTube, pretty much anywhere that music streams, you can find us. So how did Misfit Toys get started? How long has it been around? The project itself was started back in 2007. Um, we've been performing live since 2010. Okay, wow. So what was the inspiration in being like, hey, group, let's form this, let's do our thing. Uh, originally, it was just me by myself. Um, I used Misfit Toys as a outlet for things that I was going through at the time. Um, and it was an outlet for me. I was a keyboardist in various other bands and uh, just pursued this as my own outlet. And then in 2000, and um, Jason, uh, my current keyboardist, uh, me and him left the band that we were in at the time, and we decided to push this as our main project forward and uh, been going hard at it ever since. <laughs> yeah, so I did speak with um, Jason and Travis, uh, their Protocol 19 interview. Have you listened yes. to any of that? Oh, yes, I've, I've kind of helped here and there on uh, just my opinion on certain things. Um, but yeah, that's all them. And I, I love what they do. So what was the biggest challenge you had within Misfit Toys? Trying to find members that shared the same vision and were willing to stick around. Um, I, I appreciate all the members who have been in Misfit Toys over the years. We've gone through quite a lineup change, but I realize that some people are only able to give their time and effort for that time. Um, sometimes things come up in other people's lives where they have to move on and do other things or they have family and that you know becomes more of their priority. So um, that was the biggest hurdle to overcome was, was finding people that were as dedicated to this as, as I was. So what has been your either most interesting or most awkward experience during a show? Hmm. Uh, interesting and or awkward. Uh, there's been a few awkwards. Um, interesting, I would have to say, uh, I was given a handmade stuffed animal monster thing by, by a fan. Um, I think that was probably one of the more interesting things that's, that's happened at a show. And you said there's been plenty of awkward? Uh, yes, actually, there is a video on YouTube of uh, one of my performances from a few years back where I, I used to wear six inch platforms on stage. And um, back when I had a corded microphone instead of the wireless that I have now, it got wrapped around my boots and I went to pull the mic up. And when I did, my feet came out with me and straight down I went. And I remember like just holding the mic and just screaming fuck like it, it happened right at the last note of the song so people thought that that was a part of it and they just rolled with it but it was totally not 
But I mean, that that's ah. kind of the, the better thing rather than having the crowd laughing at you, just be like, yeah. I mean, there this video, it's straight up like all of a sudden I'm there and this drop out of frame. <laughs> and then you hear just fuck. I love it. That, that's so, one of the better ones I've heard. So someone can go try and find that if they want and turn it into like a three second gif of me just falling repeatedly. <laughs> Don't don't do that, please. Don't do that. I'm I'm tempted, but I just want you to know I've watched the hell out of that. I I would too. I that actually would be, went back that would be my new screensaver. <laughs> you know, it's That's not too true. late. There's still time for me to go and make that my screensaver. Thanks for the idea. You're welcome. <laughs> so, is there anything new coming out from Misfit Toys? Uh, yes. Uh, we just released a, uh, a single called Rise to Arms and uh, a remix that was done by Morris Black. Um, that is currently on our uh, band camp. Okay. And will be available on Spotify um, in the beginning of January. Okay. Uh, so right now it's still just a Spotify, I mean, not Spotify, band camp exclusive for the moment. And uh, currently, I'm finishing up our next full-length album. Um, I've got probably about six more songs to write lyrics to and have uh, finalized. And we're hoping to have that turned around by the beginning of the year. Um, so how many Misfit Toys albums are out now? Um, let's see. There are... I think there are four albums out currently, um, physical CDs, and then there are two uh, uh, online singles, and this will be the fifth uh, physical CD in the discography. So how did quarantine impact Misfit Toys in 2020? Oh, that was, that was rough, actually. Because we had just gotten off of a tour at the end of 2019 with uh, Strip Liquor and Cycle on Nine. And so we were riding that wave. And we had another tour set up with Scold for uh, 2020, going from Hollywood all the way to the southern border back to Florida. And we were real excited about that. And COVID just shut everything down. It, it was pretty hard for us taking that kind of a hit. And uh, then we started doing streaming and, and online concerts. And that was a struggle and a challenge trying to just learn a new form of media and do it in a way that didn't suck. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that it, it was pretty rough. So now that things are kind of easing up and concerts are coming back in can we expect to see you on stage anytime soon um yes we actually just performed um last november and we've got some shows in the works uh march if i believe um we're not able to release any of the information on it yet um because it's pre-contract but it should uh it should take us up the the East Coast again, from Florida up through uh, New York and all of that area, and then back down. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> so you said the lineup has changed. So what do you think is kind of like the key to maintaining that more consistently? Because bands are very much like a marriage. Uh, make sure make you sure have, you have communication, communication with your members. Members. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm sure someone has heard that in couples therapy. Yes. Um, actually, I, I kind of uh, went over this with our, our drummer, Travis, uh, a couple weeks ago. We were just kind of going back and forth. And I was like, you know, kind of laying out like the list of like stuff that, you know, I expect from the band and, and from the members and everything else. And, you know. Like, I, I want everybody to be involved. I want people to feel like they're contributing, like they're doing something with the band. Otherwise, if you're not, you, you just get burned out of it real quick. 
and there's no reason to be in it. You know, um, I find that being open and, and uh, working with your members helps the relationship <laughs> most definitely. So have you been a part of other bands? I remember you said you were in another one with Jason. Yes. So how many music music product uh, how many music projects have you been a part of? Um a part of four that I can remember offhand. Uh but I have guested on tracks for people uh or helped behind the scenes on other music that I just don't put my name on. Just trying okay. to help you. All right. Definitely like that. So how did you get started in this? What made you decide, OK, music, this is what I want to do the rest of my life? Oh, gosh, I actually know that one off the top of my head. I, I remember I was uh, I was 15 and I was sitting on the couch one summer and I was watching. Uh, what was I watching? I was watching Fuse back then and I saw a music video come up for Static X, uh, the only. And I remember watching it and just sitting there in awe. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that when I grow up. I want to I want to perform. I want to learn how to play an instrument. I want to I want to actually do this. And I remember how excited I was and how much energy it brought me just to see someone performing like that. It's like, yeah, that. And so I, I just kept pushing at it and pushing at it and here we are. So what instrument did you learn to play? First, um, I had played uh, classical um, throughout high school. I was a French horn player. Um, and when I actually started to, to think about wanting to be a musician, I picked up bass and started teaching myself how to uh, play the bass and then I moved to piano and then started learning how to program drums and timing and rhythms and then um, I kept trying to just be a musician I, I never wanted to be the front man I never wanted to be a singer ever it's just kind of like ah, you guys can have that I'll stand in the back and I'll play keys or I'll play bass or, I'll, or guitar or one of the various other instruments and um, I remember there was one of the bands that we were in, me and Jason, the, the singer told me that a ship can only have one captain. And when one of the shipmates feels that they need to be captain, that's when they need to move on and do their own thing. And I sat back and thought about it and I was like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to push this to the next level. And that's when I started becoming the front man for Misfit Toys, um, becoming a vocalist. And, and do you think that uh, suits you better? Uh, it's hard to say because I still want to be a musician. I, like, I, I, of course, I write a lot of the music here, but I don't get to perform it. I, I do the vocals, but I miss being able, able to play. Okay. So there is there is a part of me that enjoys being the front man. But there's also another part of me that still wants to be a musician. I still want to perform and I still want to play. Um, and I miss that aspect of it. OK. That kind of makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I play well, for myself. I play instruments, too. Yes, and I have tried. Um, I have tried to play guitar and sing at the same time. I've tried to play keyboards and sing at the same time. I'm I'm not that talented. Okay. I wish that I was. <laughs> OK, fair enough. Oh my God. So what can we expect in the future from Misfit Toys? You said you've got um, a full length album coming out. You recently dropped a single. Yep. And it's possible that you'll be on tour soon next year. Yes, we're also um, in the stages of planning a, uh, another music video. Um, so yes, hopefully we'll have that 
finished right about the time that we should be going on tour. Um, that's a nice way to kick it off. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a a different feel with this album um, than the previous albums. So I'm excited to finally put that out there so people can hear it. And uh, as far as anything else, we are we're just excited to be playing shows again. You know? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. My God. So we can find you on all the streaming services. Your music videos yeah. are available on YouTube, I'm sure. Yes, they are. Awesome. This has been so great. Um, I'll make sure that I link people to where to find you when I post this video. Guys, this has been Richie Sirev of Misfit Toys. And thank you so much for joining me. It's been thank so you having this this opportunity to talk with so many talented people and I love misfit toys so much. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys next week with more.